today. So for this session, fireside chat with a good friend of mine, Mr. Eddie, Eddie Levdansky for Major 10. Please, Eddie, join me. Uh, yeah, this for yeah, this for you. Okay, join me, Eddie. So uh, we, I, I uh, encourage the audience to uh, be with us. You can move a step forward if you want. Uh, we'd be happy to uh, be with you on this one. So, Eddie, before we start, maybe you'll present yourself uh, real quick to the audience. Yes, so my name is Eddie I'm Eddie Dan Kilisani, associate at the Health of Fox for almost uh, seven years, we focus on uh, IP investigation and intellectual property investigation, and also commercial uh, issues, but mainly, uh, mainly intellectual property investigation. So, I think to speak about all that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eddie. Thanks. Great to have you with us. And let's talk about IP in FinTech. Um, how does intellectual property protection play a crucial role uh, in the FinTech industry? Um, what's the importance of the, the IP question? How do you see it? So basically, like every tech industry, the fintech industry, the technology is in fact IP. The, the product of the company in main asset is its IP. So it has a crucial uh, part in, in the issue. Uh, when it comes to investors, uh, when you get the transaction with and from our perspective of the uh, of law of IP law, when transactions the uh, investors uh, wish to clearly identify what is the IP of the company and uh, to make sure that the IP belongs to the company and it is undisputed among its contractors, employees, uh, etc. Okay, thanks for that. And what are the key considerations for fintech companies when it comes to protecting and securing? Their IP assets. How do you see that? So, since we are dealing with mainly software uh, and uh, other elements such as the uh, graphic elements, to my architecture, uh, it is really hard to obtain a, a registered patent in the last in the last year. So, our discussion is mainly about copyright and trade secrets. On one hand. Uh, and trademark on the other hand. Uh, so, unlike that, definitely the United States, uh, copyrights are not registered on the right, the trade secrets as well. So, how do you, how they are created? So, uh, copyrights are being created upon the creation of the world, upon the creation of a code or a other work. And uh, also, there's a great secret once confidential information that uh, provides the company some sort of benefit uh, is being created. Yeah. It's a great secret. So the question is who uh, these IP assets belong to? And, uh, so, the easy example with the uh, Israeli copyright law is that um, in the employment relationship, the the law sets, uh, sets out uh, a default according which uh, the, the employer is the owner of every work uh, made by an employee. Uh, however, in the contract or in client relationship, uh, the picture is different. The default is uh, absurd, in, in my opinion, is that the contractor is the owner of a work, uh, a work for hire. And then the party sets out in an agreement or a written uh, the opening. Now, this, uh, this default creates a lot of uh, disputes and litigation at the latter stage uh, of companies that in the, the, the beginning uh, didn't set out contractual uh, arrangements between the partners. For example, in, in many cases, a, a, a startup. It starts without even a legal entity existing. Several partners are working. One is a developer, the other one brings the money, the third is the 
doing marketing and they work without an agreement, without anything. Uh, time comes and they should not be successful, they have a dispute, they have other uh, business opportunities, and uh, the question is to who will be the work developed by the developer. And so the default is to the, to the developer, but it is fair. It is, so the best way to secure assets is to arrange everything. Uh, from day one, sign contracts between the partner and the employee, contract choice. Uh, this is one uh, aspect. The other one is the framework. And uh, like every business, that will be you transmit your services to your name, to your brand. So the first step that we always uh, advise clients to do is uh, simply check, even before you secure your own rights, uh, secure the position that you want to subject to a third party claims of, of you infringing a prior a trademark. So this is one. And then, of course, register your trade, trademark so it would be easier to enforce it upon uh, infringement by a competitor. Thank you very much, baby. Uh, we uh, used a few examples. You can share a few case studies of uh, IP strategy in the fintech industry and its implications. The way forward. So I give. A, I, I cannot, of course, expose uh, any name uh, uh, due to client uh, early relationship. So one a company we represent one of the largest companies in the world in the, in the fintech industry. Um, this this company is a good example of the. Uh, how it was arranged from the beginning, everything is set with the agreement and everything. The company raises the claims towards its ex senior offices, senior development staff. Um, and we are in a really good position uh, due, to, uh, due to this agreement signed uh, in early stage. Uh, the second uh, example is the insure tech company that we represent, very successful one, but it's uh, Good example of bad conduct in the beginning. Um, uh, one of the first uh, developers of the company was the first uh, the contractor, um, without a written agreement whatsoever. He received a lot of money from the company, and uh, then at the last stage, uh, they had a fight. He had a fight with the founder, and he left the company. Uh, the company is worth. Uh, Hundreds of millions of dollars, and today he is not today, two years ago, it's still ongoing. Filed a claim against the company, uh, demanding 25% of the shares, uh, arguing that the founder promised him orally that he will be their equal partner. And this is a good example of how uh, a short one page agreement would. Uh, they have very costly litigation proceedings uh, that we don't know how it will end. Uh, so, uh, so uh, that's uh, good enough. I guess there are so many examples, but uh, you know, we talked today so much and so many times about generating AI. And I think that it will be interesting for the audience as well to understand what are the main risks in terms of IP increases when using generated AI for startups. Or so I guess the uh, I'm just loyal like the audience here understands the technology uh, much better than me, but uh, it's, everyone knows that we are facing now one of the most significant breakthroughs, technological breakthroughs in the human history. So of course that the law is uh, not uh, does not uh, keep up with the the pace of of the, of the technology, um, but we expect a major dramatic uh, legislation uh, in the, the following years. But uh, right now, as we see, there are two major risks in using uh, generated AI for creation of a, let's say, platform of a fintech company. Um, one risk is uh, you expose yourself to uh, Third party arguments and claims of the infringement of the intellectual property rights, such as copyright, uh, trade secrets, maybe. 
and the, and the privacy right uh, why because the machine let's say you have uh, some engine ai engine you create something for your dashboard uh, that involves code uh, you don't know where the, the machine takes its data from the materials from and it may take portions of uh, let's say open source code uh, with a restrictive uh, license and uh, and uh, Put, put it in uh, in within your product and uh, you are exposed to third party claims. Uh, the second danger, which uh, is it's not a really risk, it's uh, just a theory. Um, the US Copyright Office now issued a, a statement of the well, policy statement. Uh, according to which uh, they think that many countries will follow the master state. Uh, uh, IP generated, copyrights generated by a few will not be registered, will not be acknowledged as a protected uh, copyrighted uh, works. Uh, and the Copyright Act uh, intended to secure and protect human creativity and not machine creativity. Now, uh, it's uh, again that that risk but if you order uh, your platform entirely or partially through a machine work you will not be able to enforce your ip rights if they are infringed uh, that's it uh, you know it's uh, really early we expect as i said a substantial uh, development in this uh, and do you think the israeli regulator will follow and will act as the US regulator? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, the, 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 regarding uh, the, the, the Ministry of Justice issued a, a memorandum also recently uh, regarding use of AI. It's the first point that they that they mentioned. Use of AI, it's not binding, it's not binding. Use of AI uh, to for the purpose of machine learning. Uh, they are in the opinion that it should be considered as fair use and not as copyright infringement, but not providing and does not address the uh, 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 situation of creation of a platform for commercial use. So, so Professor, in area, now me, and before we break it up, if you have one piece of advice for the entrepreneurs in the room, what will it be? Give, uh, give me a call by your lawyer sure, before you act and take, uh, take some advice. Many thank you very much for being with us. Appreciate your insight. Thank thank you very much. Much. Okay, so thank you very much for joining us. We'll wrap this up. Now uh, it was a great pleasure hosting this summer summit of Kate We have some pieces and snacks here. So you're welcome to network and uh, introduce one another and uh, join us.